But most importantly are your prayers and support. Thank you so much for all you do out there. Undoubtedly, uh, the actions of the feds beating people up, attacking anyone, trying to demonstrate peacefully on the side of state highways, the sheriff standing down, the troops garrisoned amongst the people that violates one of the first 10 Bill of Rights. It was something that the public needed to respond to. And Tiananmen Square happened. In fact, I saw a graphic in one of Watson's articles on InfoWars today I want to show that shows what I described already last week. Well, Saturday when it happened was like the tanks of Obama, the tanks of the UN driving up and you got a cowboy in front of it. In fact, I want our graphics department to make one where it's the Tiananmen Square photo, but where it's UN tanks. That's, that's more proper. That's what this treaty is to do this. And then there's the cowboy in front of it. Uh, but I'll find that in a moment. If you go to DrudgeReport.com, his top three stories, Harry Reid on cattle battle, it's not over. Under that, Ron Paul warns feds could launch Waco-style assault. That's an Infowars.com article. And then a great photo and image, uh, an article at CBS News. Founding fathers didn't create government like this. And it's a story with the man who's on with us right now, uh, Cliven Bundy. Uh, and, and, you know, his quotes and what he has to say. Um, but he basically gives his point. And, you know, people are sick of it. I, I, I happen to have run into three, well, I ran into two, and then somebody told me about another, Austin cops on Saturday who all, you know, said, hey, isn't it great, you know, that nothing violent happened and that the feds back down. It is time for us to push back. You know, the, the feds have too much land. Uh, they're, you know, the taxes are too high. Everybody knows we're being screwed here. And so just the image of the cowboys riding down, the, being threatened to be shot, going over. All of this happening is so archetypal and so powerful. All right, Clive, and I want to give you the final comments here about uh, trying to get these armed paramilitaries out of your area where your family's been since 1877. I wish they'd be down on the border, uh, but Obama's getting rid of that. I wish they would, uh, you know, deal with some actual crime. I could show them some crack dealers down the street from where my office is, but no, I guess they're out there making sure that on thousands of square miles, nobody holds up a protest sign against the BLM. <laughs> well, you know, I, I, I guess this is my opportunity to say uh, we need to get rid of these uh, bureaucracies, and especially the arms of them. You know, arms. I'm talking about the guns that they carry around. We've got, we've got, a, we've got bureaucracies all over the country, and they are created their own armies within the bureaucracies, and then they bring these bureaucracies together to come against we the people. And, you know, they created an army within the United States. Uh, it's even bigger than the army that we have to fight the world. And so it's time now to, to take these guns away from these people and give the sheriff power, policing power, back to our sheriffs. And, hey, if our sheriff needs help, we'll, we, the people, will help those sheriffs take care of things. But they, they, these sheriffs have good deputies and let them have our peace and power. We, the people, have elected and pay these sheriffs to protect our life, liberty, and property. We have no desire anymore in this United States for the United States government to be carrying weapons and acting like sheriffs. That's got to end right now. And county sheriffs, get the job done. Take these arms away from these bureaucracies. I agree with you. Let me play a clip uh, of Obama, a clip of Obama where he said they want a domestic security force just as big, just as strong as our military, and they've armed almost every federal agency, spending up to $198 million per social security building uh, with private mercenaries, actual combat troops, combat veterans, cream of the crop, uh, thousands of armored vehicles deployed and delivered, uh, helicopters, uh, open training to take on the Tea Party. Uh, that's in Forbes magazine. We, of course, broke it, but I'm saying it's mainstream news. W what do you make of them building up this domestic army? I want to get your take on that, Clyde, but first, here's this clip of Obama, candidate Obama in 2008. We cannot continue to rely only on our military in order to achieve the national security objectives that we've set. We've got to have a civilian national security force that's just as powerful, just as strong, just as well-funded. And who do they deal with? Well, they deal with 
ranchers in the middle of a wasteland. Clive, your exactly. comment on that. That's exactly what was coming against we the people. We as a rancher, we the people here in Clark County. That is exactly what they were doing. That was exactly the army that was coming against we the people. And that's exactly the army I'm saying county sheriffs disarm them. And each county sheriff, there's like 3,100 county sheriffs in this United States. Each one of you take your responsibility and get the guns away from these people. They are an army within us, within us, and then individually you can take care of that. Those arms in your county, it won't have to be a big national or international war. Get the job done. Well, back in 1962 or 61 when they had the UT Tower shooting, I forget the year, uh, my buddy Mike Hansen's dad, there's famous photos at the museum of his dad in the ambulance getting shot, and the ambulance getting shot up as he pulled around saving people that were shot. And while he's getting people into the ambulance, um, his dad was a hot rod racer. That's why he became an ambulance driver. In the old days, those guys were like drove a Ghostbusters style, uh, you know, ambulance. So he'd drive that up and down Congress. But uh, you know, there's all these photos of his dad, you know, sitting there picking the people up, getting them into the by himself, putting them on stretchers, getting them in there. He was a big guy, and uh, they were uh, you know shooting at him, and it was and everybody just pulled their rifles out and pinned him down. So a citizen. And a, and a police department, and I've interviewed both of them, um, could, could one of them became a Texas Ranger later, could go up and kill that guy. And, and, and it was actually the, you know, the, the civilian, as they'd call him, who actually got the first shots off, and then the cop shot him as well. Um, but both of them had courage. But, I mean, nowadays, imagine if somebody was on a tower and citizens started pulling guns out, I guarantee you the cops would probably shoot you. And it just shows yeah. the domestication uh, situation. It was 1966. Sorry, go ahead. Yeah, we've got to change this around. The, 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 the sovereignty, the policing power is in we, the people, and we only give part of that power to our county sheriff. And we did. We give no power to the United States government in that in that sense to come down against the system. The power of the United States government is supposed to deal with foreign problems, not not within the, the United States. Not we, the people. You get your armies. Uh, and fight the battle somewhere else uh, to protect this land, not harass their people. Well, that's right. Every third world cesspit has a domestic military that rules over the people and becomes an oppressive group of uh, gangster thugs, and we don't want gangster government. Final comment from you, sir, and then I want to give out your website and put his blog on screen for TV viewers, and I'll get the URL for folks so I can give it out here on air. Uh, but uh, Scarborough of MSNBC, I guess he kind of represents the establishment, a so-called Republican, and we've had some other Republican talk show hosts criticizing him, not to your face, but behind your back and having you on. Uh, I'm not going to name names, it's just very shameful uh, and, and, and misconstruing what's going on. You know, he says you need to obey the law. I wanted to play that clip and you know, let you respond to basically this entire group of people. It's not libertarianism, you actually, yeah, I mean, if, if, if you respect the rule of law. Right. Uh, this, and there have been laws this, passed. This guy for right. 20 years has, has been breaking the law right. oh. using federal land. He hasn't been paying the grazing fees that everybody else pays. For some reason, this guy thinks that the laws that apply to every other rancher in the United States of America don't apply to him. And um, there's no doubt the Bureau of Land Management overreacted. This could have been handled much better. So I think you, you go even people on the further boundaries of the right in the conservative movement think that if this guy is going to use federal land, then this guy should actually pay the fees. And he's, he owes over a million dollars right now. All right. And so this is, yeah. That's enough. Uh, you want to respond to that? Because, I mean, Rosa Parks yeah. needs yeah. to follow the rule and sit at the back of the bus. Go ahead. Okay, yes, I would like to respond to that. Uh, first, if I owe a uh, uh, million dollars, uh, if I owe that, I'd be happy to pay that to the proper farm of government. Well, it would have to be my state. And the other thing is this is not about Clive and Bundy. It's not about his cows or not about his grazing rights. What it's about is liberty and freedom of we the people. And we the people is making this move, not Clive and Bundy. So, America, make it move. Let's take these guns away from these bureaucracies. And... And, and enjoy some freedom and liberty. 
that's that's when we go out and enjoy a picnic or to park. Best don't let those people ruin our picnic. Well, I mean, look, bottom line, your family had the rights. They started claiming all these fees. They, ra they ran all the other families off with the fees because they couldn't survive. Beef prices are all-time highs. Briefly, can you speak to that, beef prices being at all-time highs because they admit people are getting out of the cattle business because of all the fines and fees and regulations? Well, you know, that's true. They, the Western United States could produce a lot of beef for American people and a lot of beef for the world. We could be feeding these, and you know, this uh, public land, in the sense of public land, should be producing beef and should be producing oil and coal and gas. It should be producing things, and that's what God made it for us to produce. There's renewable resources.